Hi, Kirsten from I Know What's Up. And I just wanted to do a little intro to my video. I wanted to do a shout out to my friend Roxanne. I love you to pieces. I admire you so much. You're amazing. And I thank you for the gift and the honor and the privilege of getting to do this video with you. I learned uh, so much. You are an amazing cook. And I hope that you watch all the way through. It's a little bit of a longer video because <laughs> it's making bread, but her boys show up and they make it crazy funny. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the happy and the healthy side of life. Hi, Kirsten from I Know What's Up. And today we're gonna make challah and we're gonna use einkorn wheat. So we, she is an expert bread maker, my friend Roxanne, but she's never used this. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. So welcome. So I didn't bring a, enough of the wheat, the mine's an all purpose. So she's got some kernel and she's already ground it and she's sifting it to help it blend with the all purpose. So that's the process. Yeah, there's, it's a little brown on huh? Yeah, well, because it has the outside of the kernel on it, probably. You can show the other thighs in there. You don't mind being in my video? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I only have 21 subscribers. <laughs> It's not like I have a mass following. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you'll be my ticket right here. There you go. You can come up and do videos of me. <laughs> you, um, I'm just going to say she is an excellent, excellent cook. She should be doing her own videos and she'd skyrocket. I don't get time to make videos. <laughs> she ain't got no time. She's a farm woman. Okay. This wouldn't yeah. hurt to have in there at all, but you see how it takes out the... Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely show. So, so she just sifted and that left that. Um, I wouldn't mind having it in there, and so it sometimes makes it so it doesn't rise as fluffy though. So, because it, it's kind of a harder grain. Yeah, it's sometimes I take it and I'll sprinkle it on top. Let me see if I can show you the difference. Should I touch it? Yeah, you can. It's very fluffy. So, here's the the difference. So, that can definitely be used for something. Can I put it? Oh in? yeah. Um. Okay. Can you put it. Wait. 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 Let me tear it. And then I'm gonna, cause I'm weighing it. Okay. Are we making two loaves? Yeah. Okay. I get to bring one home. <laughs> holla for holla. <laughs> you heard that one before. Okay, huh? I yelled some of the powder. <laughs> What kind of mixer is this? It is a cobalt. Oh my god. <clears throat> Stepped it way up. So uh, in here you've already activated the yeast with some warm water? Warm water and a little bit of sugar. <clears throat> so how much are you using flour wise? And... I'm using 780 grams of flour. Okay and what does that equate to in American? <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh I don't know. You know I could tell you I have the... Are flour. you operating solely out of the metric system? <clears throat> Um, when I do bread, I do it by weight because it's more accurate. Because oh. cups, when you have flour, mm -hmm. depending on whether you take a loose cup of it or you spoon it in or you pack it down, you end up with a different weight. Mm -hmm. So bread's kind of finicky. <clears throat> and if you don't use the right amount in the ratios, it, really, it doesn't it it make, really make, make a difference. difference. So <clears throat> you, you one more time, you did 700? 700, 780 grams of flour. And you can do the math. <clears throat> math wizards. <laughs> We're not going to do it for you. And then the, how much water did you add? Did you just get a packet of yeast? That was one cup of water and yes, it equates to, I think, two packs of yeast. It's four and a quarter teaspoons of four yeast. Four and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. <clears throat> Challah bread is really, really beautiful. It's used for Shabbat um, in the Jewish world and it's braided. So it's really pretty looking. Mm -hmm. And two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of salt. I'll repeat everything she says. <laughs> <clears throat> now I do a 
took some kind of a couple con uh, additions that most people don't do. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to use a little bit of whey. So normally it's one and a quarter cups of water, but I do one cup of water and I do a quarter cup of whey, which is something I have on hand because I make cheeses and yogurts and mm -hmm. stuff, but everybody doesn't have that. So. <laughs> milk and culture. Okay, I didn't even know what whey was. Yeah. Now I do. <laughs> it's, that so when you eat yogurt, you're eating whey because Greek yogurt just has the whey strained off of it. So whenever you make cheese or yogurt or anything that you use a culture and a rennet maybe to, um, with cheese there's a rennet, but um, with you, yogurt this is the runoff. Okay. And it's actually really good for you. It has lots of probiotics in it. It has lots of um, vitamins. Um, some people will actually, I mean, you use it for protein drinks, they actually dry away and use it. Yes, yeah, I, you use it, I use it at work for shakes. Yeah. We put whey in it, and it said gluten-free on there. And I I find it funny some of the things they put gluten-free on. I know, whey is it's not. It's very confusing. With the powders, I could see maybe they're adding something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, possibly, that makes sense. When you just have the straight liquid that you've strained out your cheese from, you're not going to have any of that. And there's two different kinds of whey, so... There's acidic whey, and then there is um, a non-acidic. So yogurt is a non-acidic because it's from uh, the kind of culture that's used is different than the culture you use for making cheeses. Okay. If that makes sense, because you put a rennet in, and it actually acidifies the milk and yes. breaks the curd apart. Yeah. So this one is from um, yogurt. Awesome. So you've already added the whey to to this cup here. This I added it to here. So I just used a quarter cup of whey and poured it in the middle okay. of my flour. And what day. do you think that does? Um, I think it, it just adds to the texture of the bread. It has a little bit of vitamins in there. It's um, I use it in almost all my breads. I do it in my sourdough, everything. Um, <clears throat> it just adds a little bit of a, I don't know, a thing. <laughs> I don't a little, know how to a little it. extra nutrition. Mom? Yeah. Great. Mom? So you, what is, this is the yeast. So yeah. you just buy bulk yeast. Do you get this from Azure? Mm -hmm. Azure standards. I don't know if you guys know, but there's uh, Azure standards is a, uh, what would you, how would you describe it? It's like a bulk organic. It's not all organic, but it's all like natural GMO. They make an effort. Not they have a lot of um, organic, anything that you would buy in a Whole Foods or a um, health food store and even more you can find there. Yeah, um, I even get and, my and maybe food. in bulk, and it's a little cheaper. So yeah. it's like the online Costco of the natural food. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. Yeah. What? Can you the washing stop saying all the time we're doing something? No, they're just sitting there. You know you're on video. We're right? gonna have an interesting video. <laughs> yes, you. Roxanne has three very rambunctious boys. That was Caleb. So for the eggs, I'm using duck eggs because I happen to have them. You can use chicken eggs too. Okay. Um, I take one of the eggs and I actually separate it and I use the yolk in here and then I save the white to use to brush on, on the top. top. Yeah. And why do you prefer duck eggs over chicken? The duck eggs, um, gosh, is, I don't know if I can give you the bread? science of it. Makes it's it for it all baked goods. The, there's actually more protein in the, I'm going to get this word wrong, albumin of the egg. Um, I think it's the white part of the egg. And the way that it breaks down when you're baking, it makes things a lot fluffier. Ooh, that's, not fair. Some... Good. that's right, I'll still have enough in there. Let's see if I can I'm save, save, it. save, save the duck. <laughs> Why is Caleb gonna be inside? Um, so it, uh... <laughs> this is really gonna be great video. <laughs> and we're gonna have a whining contest. Why do you have to be inside and I can't be outside? This is no fair. <laughs> you can see, like, you see how stringy the white is on duck eggs? boring. It's much, it's different. Like, the texture is different on it. So what do you think that does for the bread? It makes it fluffier. Nice. And uh, the and the yolks are richer, mm -hmm. so it gives you a little bit of a richer flavor. Especially for challah, because challah um, relies a lot on yolks. Mm -hmm. It makes it, like, a richer... Yeah. Right. So for me, I can't eat, I can't go find hala that's gluten free or um, other breads really. And the breads that 
you do find that are gluten free are very, uh, they're made from rice, almond flour, and then they add a bunch of different things in there that I really don't want in my bread. This is going to be a basic bread with very little in it. So um, it's, I'm excited to have bread. And I, I'm, I wanted to record this to see if I can duplicate. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, so the other two things we're adding are coconut oil. This is an expeller pressed coconut oil that doesn't actually have a coconut flavor. I get it from Master. Um, but it's organic, expeller pressed, and healthy coconut oil. And, I get and now, spray. could you use the. Um, you can use regular coconut oil. Could you use the taro? Tar you could. Um, I like the texture of coconut oil because it's more like a little bit solid compared to other oils, but you can use any oil you want. Traditionally, the Jewish people olive. don't use um, butter or dairy because you can't mix they them. don't like to mix them. So, um, and they like to have their meat on Shabbat. So, <laughs> if you use dairy, then it can't have it. Right. <laughs> So I'm going to put in um, 50 grams of coconut oil. Okay. And then can you talk about the taro, taro, taro a little bit? So taro is uh, rendered beef fat, is what it is. And we used that in our in our breakfast this morning, along with um, actual butter that she made, which was great. Um, it's a saturated fat, but it's similar to coconut oil, where it doesn't break down in your system and go into... Um, like a hydrogenated or a, uh, wood, it doesn't. It doesn't it attach to it. your body. It is basically, your body can really process it, yeah. it, and there's a lot of nutrients within it. So that's only why you, your body can process it. Only if it's from grass-fed cows, because grass the grass-fed cows. cows store all of their vitamins in their fat. So that's why butter from a grass-fed cow and tallow from fat from a cow. It's so, so much healthier for you. Yeah, they have all the carotene and everything they get from eating what they're supposed to eat. So it looks like you're adding apple sauce. This is actually honey. It's just oh, crystallized. Is this from Montana? Yeah. Oh. So it's, um, you can, and you don't have to use a crystallized version. It's just really. Like, so is this the last of it? Yeah, it's my last jar. Are you really going to be sad? Are you going to have to take a trip to Montana? I know. No, I'll we'll have to find a local place here. And I'm putting 170 grams of this in. Mom, you have so, wow, that is huge. This is the this smallest is commercial mixer you can get. <laughs> she is a serious baker. Oh my god, I love it. And I burned up probably, I think I three or four KitchenAids. And then he finally bought me. Yeah, he's like, oops. Hi baby. Hi baby, how are you? So, is... Is uh, bread something like cakes where you don't want to overmix? No. No. Bread is the opposite. So, so there's like, gluten in the flour, and you actually, that's why you need bread. You need and need and need and need because you're trying to activate that gluten. That makes sense. And it actually makes it, give, gives you that stretchiness in dough. Okay. Um, if you don't need it enough, it doesn't work great. Right. So how long would you beat this? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix it up. And then I'm going to let it sit for uh, about 10 minutes because when you're using a uh, whole wheat flour, I found that it needs better if you let it sit and kind of soak up some of the liquid mm -hmm. Just because the grain in the whole wheat is uh, it's more not as porous as the as white flour is going to process mm -hmm. soaked and all of that. Um, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't always activate its gluten as well. Mm -hmm. So that sitting, it's called autolyzing. Mm -hmm. is what they call that, um, to let a dough sit for a certain period of time to kind of just like melt a little bit and then come back and make it. So as soon as it's mixed up, which is almost there, they get that flour in the bottom. So have you ever made a hollow with a whole wheat? Yeah, I actually make hollow with whole wheat pretty often. Okay. Um, but the whole wheat that I use is usually um, kamuts. I use half kamuts and half uh, hard white wheat. Yeah. And it comes out pretty good. Yeah. Um, and you like kamut. You were talking about that yesterday. Tell me about that. Um, it's just another ancient grain. I can show you. Mm -hmm. And you can see what it looks like. Yeah, I've seen Kamut before. So do you grind that? I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it... Um, of course you do. That was a really tough question for Fred. I like Kamut as far as the ancient grains go. I like it because it, it creates a real stretchy dough. It was often used in pastas. And um, it's just, it's really nice to work with. Do, would you sift it or would you just use the whole... Uh, when I do hollow, I sift it. 
Um, no, actually, no. When I do, yeah, when I do challah, I sift it. When I do just a yeast whole wheat risen bread, like a sandwich bread, I don't sift it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just because challah is, I don't know, it's a different texture when you, you want your challah to be like, yeah, buttery. you want it kind of fluffy. It's not buttery, but yeah, fluffy and soft. And a lot of times, challah is great for um, the next day for French, for French toast. toast. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and bread puddings or anything yeah. like that, challah is really good in. Awesome. No. And then when I do sourdough, I sift it because sourdough is so finicky about rising yeah. that I don't want to have those those larger grains. Now, if you had, there's different ways to grind wheat. So mm -hmm. if I had like the big stone ground thing, mm -hmm. it might be different. I might get a different texture, but the grinder that I have grinds the whole thing. Okay. So, so um, you could actually get some um, uh, difference in texture that you could blend in. Mm -hmm. For, to the bread that would make yeah. it really and sometimes if you take like what I sifted off there and after it autolyzes and after you've risen it you just kind of lightly knead in or you sprinkle it on the top or roll it yeah, in sprinkling it. on the top it's would totally be great different. we we can um, yeah. actually we'll, take we'll use that we can sprinkle it on top with the egg wash and mm -hmm. sprinkle that yeah. would be pretty yeah because it's good and there's nothing wrong with it it doesn't taste bad oh, yeah. but it just affects the rising of the bread mm -hmm. and doesn't make it um I don't know, you end up with a flatter bread. It doesn't, the gluten just can't get in there and work right. So. She's going to she's gonna talk a little bit about starting a sourdough starter. I've never done any of this, so it's exciting for me. So this is my starter here. Mm -hmm. And this one's been going since Passover. Mom, do you have a snack? Um, oh, the video's over there. <laughs> um, so all I do, I, well, I like to use, you can start it with any flour. You can actually do starters with fruits too, which I've never tried to do, but you can do like grapes or anything that creates like It's a just yeast. fermented flour. It's just fermented flour. Yeah. All it is is half flour, half water. Mom. I do it by weight and I stir it up and then you'll see here I'll feed this. Is this one right too now. much? Yeah, I'll do I'll do a different jar. Mom. So to feed it, I take half out and you can use that if you want. Or if I wasn't making a in corn only hala, I would have taken a little bit of this and probably thrown it in my dough just for flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but I take half out and I'm just going to toss it. Okay. Next time. <laughs> Next time I come, you'll have it ready. Wow. <laughs> what? Whoa, dude. Okay, we'll get a drink of water. And then I use the scale. And I have a mixture over here that is, um, Whoa, it's half rye and half what? hard white wheat. Sam, I found the bullet. Uh, just, that's it's just right the, in, the combination it? that I found has worked it really is. well. Rye really, for some reason, likes to it? ferment and get in there really fast. So that's one of the reasons I like using rye. Yeah, why would you have it? Wait, no, no it's actually over the blue skull. Rye is something I can I actually saw it. No, it's not. No, I actually saw it. It's not there. I swear. And I just do an even, you can do it in any size you want. I keep it small Mom. just because then the night before I make a bigger batch of it and I'm able to Mom. use it in something. So I don't have a big old it is. thing. Mom, tell us. And then you just use half water. I'm not lying. It actually was over by the boots. It was? And I use uh, filtered water. But you can use, you don't want to use, um, you don't want to use yeah, like city water that has chem, uh, Chemicals? Stuff in Pharmaceuticals? It. Yes. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> I'll say it. it all actually... that stuff you throw and poop and piss out. I'm no, sorry. <laughs> Shocking. Yes, it does go into the system, and yes, they filter it, but I, it we, we don't have any idea, like, what, no, what it's techniques they're using and how good that filtration system is. So the yeah. chances are there's a lot of stuff left behind. Then I just kind of mix it up and you'll see it's not as like, the other one was nice and bubbly. You'll see how it's like flat. So now it'll, it'll, bubble. it'll bubble and it'll double in size. And then, yeah, by tomorrow it'll be, it'll be bubbling. How long do you keep doing that? I feed it every day. And then periodically, if I'm going to bake with it, the night before, I'll take it and feed it. And I'll take the half that I tossed just now, and I'll mix it with a larger amount for my recipe of flour and water. Okay. And so that's just how you keep it. And I use the same starter for any kind of flour I'm making in a recipe. How long have you had that one going? But since Passover. Oh, you said that. Okay. 
So how long can you keep a starter going? Because forever, yeah. forever. Yeah, no. there's there is starters that have been around since the pioneers and, you know, came over from Europe or whatever. And you can actually supposedly dehydrate it and save it and use dry forms and dehydrate it. But the thing is, if you like, they you can buy the San, San Francisco sourdough starter and start your sourdough. Can you give me my orange back? It doesn't stay the same Mom, Mom, because Mom, of your environment. Mom. Hold on, guys. So, Mom, as soon as you make it, it's picking up stuff out of the environment that it's in, and it's going to change to whatever yeast are in your specific kitchen or wherever you're making it. So, you'll never have the same exact starter as San Francisco sourdough. I think you're going to get San Francisco sourdough sourdough. It's not going to be like that. It'll be your own unique. Yeah. Can I have a snack? Yeah, go ahead. So I'll put the iron corn way out in a little jar. I don't know. So I'll do time. this. I'm going to take another jar. And what will you weigh at, 210? Yeah. Um, no, 20 grams. You just don't need very much at all. Okay, I'll just get a different orange, Sam. And then now you have to get your water. Now. <laughs> it's like the spatula in there. You can just eat an orange like that. It doesn't work that way. Oh, I went over. I'm going to tell you where we hit it. What are you doing with that video exactly? I have a YouTube channel called I Know What's Up. And I do videos. I'll go subscribe to it. Can oh, you thank like you. Edit it so that I'm not in it? I can, but it depends on what information I'll is in that I want that to get out. I'll, I'll convince everybody that subscribed to it to yeah. unsubscribe. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> I love you. How many subscribers do you have? 21. Nice. <laughs> Jeez, I really overdid that. <laughs> it's okay. We can make it. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to? No. What as long as I put the same amount of water in. Okay. Okay. 21 good enough? Yeah. 21, I won. That's an old saying in my family. How much do you actually have? 21. That's not Tw bad. 20, 21 subscribers? Oh, see, now I I've been at it a year and I got to 21. Oh, yeah. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> Would you put more? You put well, I went over a little bit more. Like <laughs> so, you What did, you go, what did you go to with the water? Half and half? Yeah, it's exactly half and half. So I ended up going to 44 instead of 46. Please don't do this, so then I went to 46. Don't so, need any of this. You, you know the... Uh, don't need any of this recording here. So then we'll take this. Stop, stop in the oh, What are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> take that like button! When I'm first starting a starter, I don't actually put a lid on. I put like a either a little piece of cheesecloth or a little piece of paper towel to get the air in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know where the bullet is. So I think I have a cheesecloth in here. Oh second. my god! You stole the bullet. I have one. It's an earth gun bullet. You lost it. We'll cut a little piece off. We took it and hit it. He has no idea where it is. Yeah, he. I gave it to her. Who? And then I feed it, I actually feed yeah. it more often Kristen. when it's first starting. I'll feed it probably Kristen. twice a day. Kristen. Who's Kristen? Until it until I start seeing it doubling mm. and bubbling and then it can it's, it's, it's made it. It's there and it's good to go. That's Kristen. Mama so don't hope this works. in the house. And we'll see next time you come if, it's, <laughs> if I still have an uncard starter going. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not putting that in it. What did he just say? <laughs> That's what you want. You want it to ball. Yeah. So if if it's not doing that, you would add, just add a little more flour until it did. Or if it's too like dense, then you you uh, can add water. Okay. Did you use? You still have a little bit of the. I just used it. Oh, got you, got you. So you're gonna grind some. So this must be her grinder right here. 
Well, it'll be interesting. I can't wait to, to, you know, figure out how you feel about einkorn. Um, sorry, it's gonna be loud for a second. Einkorn kernel that she ordered from Azura. And this is what it looks like. And then we'll go over here to the grinder. And she just dumps it in. Off the like um, grainy part, I sipped it out of the flour so it would be more like a, a white flour. Um, you can actually make a cereal with doing like a third a cup of that and a third a cup of milk and a third a cup of water. And it comes out kind of like a cream of wheat. Nice. It's good. Ooh, it if I was like staying it. longer, we'd do that. <laughs> I know. Someday I'm just going to show up with all my shit on your doorstep. <laughs> well, come on. Come on. We and I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to turn. what animals we could take one more. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just call me an animal? No, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to become a farm girl. <laughs> I'm going to learn everything I know from you. Oh, I'm going to sift a little bit of it. So. And then I might keep the rest to feed that starter. So. Which doesn't really need to be sifted to feed the starter. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's good. So you seem to have a mix of some fancy equipment and then... Um, not so fancy, some very basic, you know, you don't have one of those, you know, those sifters. Oh, which I have are, one of those, but, but it's there's... not fine enough. So actually, the, I would say this is fancy. So oh, that works better. Um, he what? He brought this home to me from the mine because they oh. they buy these. He actually, well, it was clean and he bought it from um, new, but he bought it through their supply system because they use it to, it's a really fine. Yeah, it's beautiful. It yeah. Um, they use it to and sift it's the, fast the that yeah. sifter i was <laughs> making cookies not too long ago using a sifter and yes and uh, <laughs> okay, so now we see it falling up a little more yeah and you've been doing this god when we used to meet all the time in um, Lompoc mm -hmm. for a Bible study. I started making hollow then, yeah. Yeah. But I, made it, I only made it with white flour. I never did. Yeah, so. Yeah. And then I started experimenting using the wheat flour. And for a while, I used no white flour in my house. And I was only grinding my own. I would sift it sometimes, but I used all wheat. Mm -hmm. and then my kids started protesting. And yeah, and I left in like 2011. So you've been doing this a while. Mm -hmm. You've really gotten good at this. Oh, it, it is a bit, um, is it stickier? yeah, so when we go on a walk, or do you want me to look it up now? Would you like me to look up? It, it's, it actually, ironically, and this is why I say gluten-free, gluten isn't the issue. Uh -huh. There's something else going on there with your guts, the, maybe the GMO, uh -huh. maybe mold issues with storage. There's something more going on. Let me look up and see what they say about it for bread making. Mm -hmm. We let the dough rise until it was about double, and then we punched it down. And now I'm dividing it into two equal pieces because we're gonna do two loaves. I'm weighing it so I make sure I have equal size loaves. So each of them should be about 745 grams. Why would you wanna do that? Because otherwise you'll end up with one small loaf and one big loaf. And also maybe they won't bake quite evenly? Yeah, they won't come out, yeah, totally. And then to do hala, I always do six braids. So I'm going to take each of these. I'm still doing videos. You're not in it, but your voice is. We're going to cut them into six okay. pieces. <laughs> and I'm going to get out some stuff here. My stone broke in half, but it works perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and 
Like it was guess, meant to break. I'm actually gonna take that stuff we sifted out and I'm gonna go like this. Which will end up on the bottom of our loaf. Thank you. Uh, nice dough. What do you think? Good. All right. Yeah, that you're good for now, Sonia. Yay! Yay! It Thank you, darling. Pretty well. Yeah. So. so let's get my apron out of the way. <laughs> hala for hala. Oops, my video is sliding. I, I don't like when I don't do a good job on my videos because it takes a lot of time to edit. <laughs> We're going to get six of these for each loaf. Braid it like it's hair. Kind of. It's a six braid. So good job, Mom. It's a little different. But connect them at the top. Yeah. Go all the way over. Cross them. This one goes down in the middle. Over. And down in the middle. And then you just continue that all the way down. Yeah, you're half library. That's what I'm talking about. So it's down in here. Okay, I'm gonna have to like try that and with your guidance, but we won't put it on film because this one's it's, are, it is stretchier than normal dough, so this is a lot longer than I'm used to. It keeps stretching, <laughs> so you don't have to roll them out as long. Yeah, the next one I won't. <laughs> you get this one because I don't need a big old long loaf. <laughs> well, I'll squish it together. I need a sandwich loaf. Could, would these make these make okay sandwiches? Uh, yeah, it's not bad. It keeps stretching. It's totally stretching. <laughs> Can you smush it at the end? Oh, yeah, I do that sometimes. I'll fix it, yeah. Look how fast you are. Ba bing. Yeah, that, it usually doesn't go that long, but that's okay. We'll. It we'll scrunch it and it'll be quite an interesting looking loaf. <laughs> that, is, that is the ugliest loaf of Paula I've ever done. So, here you go. It looks like a brain. Your brain on. Okay, well, it is what it is. There you go. But um, and then we Let's put it on. Let's see if I can do better on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't stretch it out as much. Wait, I want to actually try the, to do the, the braiding. Yeah, so we're going to show you the after effects because I don't want to be on film. This is mine. I, I just learned how to braid the hala. And we learned, both of us learned that um, this dough really stretches, so we did a lot shorter um, ropes. Would that be correct? Yes. And now, now Rox is going to cover it with some, or I can. Yeah, you can cover it with that. Cover it with a beautiful butterfly towel. Do you know butterflies are my thing? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. But that's my new favorite towel. I love that towel for covering bread. There's a story with the butterfly. Okay, perfect. And yeah, I, yeah, one day. So she, we're sauteing some bacon, some turkey bacon, because we are kosher, and we're making quiche. We're playing around with the um, with the dough to find out what we can do with it and. Rocks will have this down in no time flat. So we I, we cut up some vegetables and sautéed some vegetables, and we're going to make a really solid, yummy quiche. And then she made brownies, yum yum, with the einkorn. So so we will show you the end result. All right, we're going to attempt. A Take two. All right, so she's working with a, a grass butter, grass-fed butter, they say on the label, grass-fed, but it's, it isn't organic. But neither is the Kerry Gold that I use. But I want you to notice the difference from her. We, we, we know this was grass-fed, grass-finished butter, and it's yellow. And I, and I think this is what butter should always look like. It should be yellow. Now, don't mistake margarine either for... Um, it's not margarine, it's butter. No, it's butter, but margarine it will come out really yellow too, but they actually use dye yeah. to do that. Now, mixing up egg white. It's egg white with a little bit of salt and a little bit of water. Okay. And you're going to brush the hollow with that. Ouch.
brush it all over. And it gives it its shiny top. Not very <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> I think we should start a movement rectangle holla. <laughs> okay, so I'll brush and then I'm gonna sprinkle some of this on. This is the the it's the inkhorn uh -huh. inkhorn. It off. I'm gonna move it right from the yeah. board to the oven. And what are you baking that at? So I turn it to 375 and then when I put it in, I put it down to 350. Okay, and then for how long? And then I bake it for 20 no. minutes. And then I cover it in foil to keep it from browning too much and then bake it another 20 minutes. But we'll check the temperature to make sure that's right. Gonna work, okay. I didn't really get to do much with the hala because you're the expert, but I learned and I No, gonna... you braided it. You just I know I braided and I did some sauteing with the quiche and cutting and all that. <laughs> Anyways, um so I hope you enjoyed learning how to make hala because it's a great bread. As we said we can use it for French toast and you have any bread pudding. Bread pudding. It's really good in bread pudding. Um, mm -hmm. I won't eat bread pudding, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Well, maybe I'll eat yours. You can, if you make it with the inkhorn hollow, then you can eat it. I'll eat, I'll eat yours. <laughs> it's not something I've acquired a taste for. So, <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much for watching. I know what's up, and holla for holla. Make some holla. <laughs> and use einkorn. Do you have anything you want to say about einkorn? What do you think of it? This is the first time you've used it. It wasn't bad. I, I haven't tasted it yet. So yeah. I what, do you, what do you notice But it's about very it? stretchy, and it doesn't... Um, it it absorbs more lick or maybe less liquid. Yeah, you so use less liquid because it absorbs more. You have to use less liquid. More. I ended up having to add quite a bit of flour, um, and the pie crust that we made for our quiche it was um, needed a lot less liquid. So, yeah, it's um, yeah. I think if I played with it a while, I can figure it out. But the brownies turned out brownies turned out amazing. Yep. <laughs> I didn't share very much, did I? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.